Hello, lovely jewellery makers. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Natalie Patton, if you don't know. Um, and today I have been very lucky enough to open day 17 of our beautiful jewellery maker advent calendar. Um, so I was so excited when I got these. You'll see today I'm going to do whatever I I, my favorite thing whatever I get a chance to I'm gonna wire work because that's that's what makes me happy so I'm gonna go for number 17 now I was very tempted to open them all up as usual and have a have a proper little look but I have been given these beautiful white jadeite earrings now they are silver sterling all of your components are sterling silver from your gorgeous little shepherd hooks with this beautiful little kind of ball kind of pinch here you've got a gorgeous little bead cap if i can hold it there for you to see beautiful little um lovely little bead cap and a gorgeous little bead cap on the bottom as well of this beautiful pin so they are, I think they're 14 millimeters in size. So, you know, you're getting, you're getting a lot in just this one little window. They're not too heavy. It's lovely to kind of feel the weight of these, but obviously when you're wearing earrings, you want them to be comfortable. So if you wanted, you can take them straight out of the box and pop them straight in your ear and they are good to go. However, you know, we're jewellery makers, so we want to be making something a little bit extra with them. Now, what I've done to design these earrings is I've tried to ensure that they are going to be exactly the same. So often when you're making earrings, you want to have that symmetry. So you will often have to reverse the process of what you do for the left to the right earring. With this, once I taught you through how to make them, you're going to be able to just duplicate that to make the next earring. Alternatively, if you want to wear these as a pendant instead, then you've got two pendants. So they're absolutely beautiful to work with. They're the most amazing, amazing colour. Um, you know, we talked about what we were going to name them. And for, for me, I love nature. So flowers is always something which I'm kind of quite drawn to and we'd gone for snowdrops because they've got this beautiful pure white colour but I also think they're quite large you could have them as little snowballs as well if you wanted to so in terms of what I'm going to be using today to make these lovely earrings very simple in terms of your tools um, some round nose or bale step pliers will be quite helpful as well uh, nylon coated pliers to straighten out your wire maybe some needle nose or, or um, flat nose pliers uh, a flush cutter and if you want to you can also use a little bobbin to attach your weaving wire onto now I'm going to use two gauges of wire I'm going to use a 0.8 um, millimeter wire and I'm going to use three pieces of that and they're all going to be cut to the same length that if this is for one earring obviously you'll be duplicating this to make the second one so we just want to have three pieces of wire and I'm going to use that as 20 centimeters which is about eight inches and then I'm going to be using a weaving wire um, which can be a 0.4 or a 0.3 the 0.3 is going to give you something very delicate and a very intricate weave um, but both will lend itself really well to this project so shall we just get started i'm going to leave these just here at the top of my mat um, i will need to refer back to those just when creating that frame to ensure that that bead fits nicely inside so i'm going to take three lengths of my 0.8 weaving wire and i'm going to start off about eight centimeters in from the end so i'm just going to bring that up against my ruler and find that point and then I'm going to start to attach my weaving wire onto it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little tail end and just hold that in place. And I'm going to wrap around three times to secure. Now, what you can do is you can use your tools just to compress that weave. But you will find I just guide that with my finger. Um, use my fingernail really just to kind of position it. So I've now anchored that weaving wire onto my base wire or what will be my frame three times and then I'm going to bring in 
that next wire which is just going to sit nice and neatly flush at the top and I'm going to wrap that round wire I'm going to call this one wire two and the first one wire one I'm going to bring that all the way around so it comes back up at the top and then I'm going to take what I will refer to as wire three which will be my top wire again I want those wires sitting nice and flush together and I'm just going to bring that back over and I'm just going to go in between wires two and three so if you want to just separate those out at the end I can guide that weaving wire just once around the top I'm going to come back down over wires three and two so in between one and two and then back up again so I'm just wrapping that second middle wire and then once more around just the bottom so this is going to be my kind of pattern repeat in terms of my weave every now and again i'm going to come with my pliers and i'm just going to give that a little little squish together just to make sure my weave is nice and neat i can now cut off that little tail end as well so i'm going to come in with my flush cutters and i'm just going to trim off that little tail and I'm going to give it a little squish down, run my finger over it very, very gently, just to make sure there's no sharp bits that are sticking up over that. And I'm going to repeat that five times. So just to talk you through as I do it, I've done the once over the bottom. I'm going to come up in between wire two and three, just to wrap over wire one and two, moving back up to that top wire, wire three, and wrap once around that, back over to wrap between wires two and three. Again, every now and again, I'm just gonna keep compressing that weave. And then I'm gonna go back in between two and three, just to wrap wires one and two, and once again, over that first wire so that is my second repeat so as i say i'm going to do this five times so up to wrap over wire one and two right over the top to wrap the top wire back in between one and two just so i'm wrapping over those top two wires Keep compressing it down just to make it nice and neat. Then wrapping over wire one and two, and then once over one. So that is my weave repeated three times. And then two more times. As I say, you can splay these wire ends out just so it's easy to get your weaving wire in between but bear in mind there's not very likely that you're going to have an overhead camera there so you can uh, you'll find this is much a much simpler technique to do bringing that back over the bottom two wires and over your bottom one so you can speed up with that i'm going to hopefully go nice and slow just to kind of show you that repetition over one and two in between one and two to go over wires two and three so the middle and the top one back over the bottom two and finishing off just around the base wire so you can count how many you've got and don't worry as well if you miss a step it's or you know you miss one of your weaves it's really you know it really doesn't matter you can kind of work that in um, as long as you fill that space what you will probably find is by doing that length you've probably got i did measure it out i think it comes to about 0 0.5 so about half a centimeter of weaving so once you've got your weaves done. 
I'm then going to show you a really pretty way to kind of weave your wire. So it should be looking like this at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top wire, I'm still leaving my weaving wire attached, but I'm going to take this top wire and I'm going to bend it downwards. And again, you can use your fingers, but you can also use your tools if you want to. I'm then going to bend that wire so it's running again horizontally and just manipulate it so that top wire has now become your bottom wire. You just straighten that up a little bit and keep running your wires kind of flush together, nice and smooth, so they should be sitting close together, nice and parallel. And we're just going to repeat that again, only now your top wires become your number one, your bottom. So over the bottom once, up, over the now bottom and top wire, sorry, the um, bottom and middle wire, back up to wrap the top two, and once over the top, which brings your wire back down towards the bottom. Now you can use your nylon coated pliers and your other pliers just to kind of squish them down and make sure it's sitting flat. So over the new bottom wire, up over both of the middle and bottom, up over the top two, once around the top two, back around the middle, so I'm going around the bottom and the middle, keep compressing that weave down and then once over the bottom. Now I'm going to repeat that 20 times and that's going to give me about 1.8 millimetres in length and I will keep going with that until I've got those 20 repetitions. Now the reason why I'm doing that many is because obviously this is going to frame my beautiful bead so I want it to fit wide enough. So rather than you watch me do that over and over and over again, I've just done one that I've, here's one I've made earlier. So you can see here, this is the weave that I've done so far. I've brought that down, brought it along. And I'm gonna do exactly the same now, but going in the opposite direction. So I'm taking that bottom wire and I'm lifting that so it fits just going up vertically where that weave finishes. And then either with my fingers or my pliers, I'm just gonna hold that up flush, and give it a little bend across. So now that bottom wire has become the top wire again. And then I'm gonna do exactly as I did to start. I'm gonna do five repetitions of that weave. So going over the bottom, just splay those out a little bit. You want them running close and parallel together, but if you need to just bend the ends slightly, just so you can get in between, then that's absolutely fine. Over the middle two, in between to wrap over the top two, and once around the top. Coming back over the middle two, and then once over the bottom. So I'm then gonna repeat that process again. So I've got five little weaves. When I've finished my weave, I'm gonna wrap three times around the bottom to secure. So it should then, I thought I had one I've made earlier, but I can't find where I've put it. So I'm just gonna carry on with that. So that's once, we'll speed up a little bit for you. Because once you've seen how that's done, you'll get into that little pattern and repetition with it. So over the top one, that will bring it right down to the bottom again, over the bottom. And I just wanna keep pushing it in and making it nice and neat. So I tend not to work out really how much weaving wire that I need. I tend to just leave it attached to my reel or my bobbin and that way I'm not going to run too short 
and I don't have to kind of measure it out particularly. You can use any type of wire that you want with this. Um, I think obviously because we've got that beautiful white jadeite then it does lend itself to silver sterling but if you find something like a silver filled wire is a little bit more um, either budgetable or even um, a bit more malleable and a bit softer to use. Sometimes I find with the silver sterling wire it can be a little bit springy so it can take a little bit of getting used to especially if you've started off with something like a copper um, it can just take a little bit of as I say getting used to. So I'm just going to count my repetitions there one two three four five once I've finished my fifth one I'm just going to wrap that round the bottom three times to secure and again just keep coming in with your pliers just to neaten that up it should look something like this now what you can do is you can cut that weaving wire off so I'm coming in nice and close with my flush cutters and again I'm just going to turn it to an angle just so I can definitely see that I've tucked that little end in so you should be left with something that looks like this if you want to get your nylon coated pliers again just to straighten those out it is important at this point that I've got fairly nice straight wires to work with so I'm just going to run you can run them through with a cloth um, you could do it with your nylon coated whatever you like so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to bend these two sections up so I'm not going to put a sharp bend in the middle I'm just going to hold those kind of five weave sections and just start to shape it and you can get whatever shape really that you desire with it but I'm just going to start to bend these bits up so that these wires are running vertically and what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to check that my beads going to fit nicely inside and if you feel like it can be a little bit closer then you can draw those wires closer together but I think that's going to be quite a nice size what I like about the earrings is that I quite like the fact that I've got movement on those drops because they've got those beautiful pins I kind of want that movement when I'm wearing them I don't want them to swing too far forward but I'm going to put a little swirl and curl on to kind of hold them in place so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to cross my wires over just to get the shape so it doesn't really matter which ones go in front of the other because they won't be soon. It's just to get that shape and kind of symmetry. If you want to, you can do these at the same time as your next earring. So you know they're going to be exactly the same. But following this kind of pattern and shape with them should mean that you've got two fairly uniform earrings. So again, I'm just going to check. They probably come up to meet each other um, I would probably say about two and a half centimeters up then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to bend those wires out where they meet so I want those two middle wires to kind of come together and then these two here on the outer side I'm just going to bend a little bit out of the way so I'm just moving them together but separating them out a little bit and then I'm going to pinch this wire in between as I say you can keep checking that your beautiful jade bead is going to fit in the middle and then I'm going to start to make a bale with this so it's at this point you can start making a bale to fit your design if you're going to make um, earrings then you kind of want a small loop if you want to make this into a pendant then you might want to do a little bit more of a weave on these sections and make more of a bale to fit a chain or whatever you're using so I'm going to take my weaving wire again and I'm going to start to weave these two together so I'm where they come and they pinch together here I'm just going to take my weaving wire and I'm going to wrap three times 
onto this side. I'm going to hold it kind of horizontally. So again, I'm going to refer to this wire, this bottom wire, as kind of wire number one. So I've wrapped that on and it's going to just slide to the point where those two wires meet. I'm going to hold it between my thumb and my finger to keep it in place. I want these two wires running nice and closely together and I'm going to wrap two times over both and I'm going to wrap two times over the base wire number one. Keep coming in with my pliers to compress that weave and make it nice and neat. When I'm weaving I don't want my wires to cross over each other. I want them just to sit nice and neatly next to each other. So I'm going to do what I refer to as a 2-2 two -two weave, two over both, two on the bottom, two over both, two over one. And I'm going to repeat that about 10 times. I can also cut this weaving wire off at like this little tail where I started and I'm going to repeat that 10 times. So again I'm going to take you to, here's one I've made earlier because I think it's pretty self-explanatory once you've seen how that starts to form. So I've just wound some wire onto my bobbin here to show you. Um, bobbins are really good to stop it kind of flailing about a little bit. So I've done my 10 repetitions of that tutu weave and what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to shape that into the bale. So where these two wires join at the beginning I'm going to kind of lift it ever so slightly forward like so. And then I'm going to take my bale step pliers, um, all my round nose pliers, <coughs> excuse me, all my round nose pliers, whichever you prefer, and I'm just going to start shaping a little loop. If I can just have a little sip of water. I do apologise, I've been chatting all morning. I'm having such a lovely time here at the Jewelry Maker Studio. So I'm going to take my bale step pliers, I'm going to have a little think about, well, what size do I want that loop? If I'm just doing the E-rings, it only needs to be fairly small. So I think I'm probably going to use um, this kind of little one here. And I'm just going to hold it at the bottom. And then with my fingers, I'm going to guide that bale or that wire into a bale shape like so. I'm then going to take the wire and don't worry if you've got like I've got here where they're slightly two different um, lengths. What I'm going to do is I'm going to guide that through the frame. So it's coming up through the center in the middle. And then I'm going to lock these outer wires back into place. So where I separated them out before, I'm just going to draw them in. So I'm going to take those middle wires that I've just created the bale with and brought them through the middle and I'm going to kind of separate them out. Don't worry if they're a little bent at the moment, you can reshape them straight. But I'm just going to make sure that these three wires here at the side are running nice and flush together. Now I'm leaving that weaving wire on at the moment. You don't have to, you can cut that off if need be, if it's getting in the way. But I'm going to take this wire that's coming through that loop in the bale and I'm just going to bring it round all the way round to hold that wire in place and I'm gonna just give it a little press down because I want those wires to sit nice and flush together here and then I'm gonna do exactly the same with the other side so I'm gonna take the other wire from the center I'm gonna hold that across those three wires and I'm gonna take it around those three so it's like this and then again, I'm just going to give it a little press down so it's nice and tight and it's got a firm grip and hold of those three wires, but those wires are running nice and flush and flat together. You can use your tools just to kind of level them out if need be. Now one wire, I'm going to do the slightly shorter wire here, I'm going to trim off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flush cutters and I'm going to trim. Now I'm only going to trim a little bit, just enough to hold that in place, but it's going to go over pretty much the second up to that inner wire. So it's over that middle wire and then I'm going to push it right down 
and that's going to hold it in place so this is what it looks like from the front and from the back it's cut off there this one I'm not going to cut instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my round nose pliers or again my bail step pliers which whichever you prefer to use and I'm going to create a little loop with this now my loop is going to be if you can have a little look at my ready-made pair that's going to be enough to kind of link in this gorgeous little loop on the top of my bead so if I can hold that there this loop is going to secure this part on now because they're silver sterling they are very very beautiful they're very delicate as well so when I'm opening this up I'm just going to give that a little bend not too much just enough that I can slide my bead off because I'm going to be using them later I did forget to say the only other things that I've used in this kit other than the wire itself I've decided to add a little bit of a spacer bead on so I've gone for a three millimeter silver sterling spacer and I'm also going to be um, adding on a little jump ring so about a, any small jump ring would do I'd say maybe a six millimeter outer diameter at the absolute most and that's what i'm going to use to reconnect that ear wire on at the top and also go through the bail so i'm going to just start shaping that loop so as i say you can use your round nose pliers you can use your um, bail step pliers whatever you like i'm going to keep my bail step or my round nose in as i bring that it all the way around into a little loop like so and that's going to cross over the other side so I want this loop to sit in the middle of that frame and then that wire can just come just where the other one did at the top where I bent it over and I'm going to bend this one over and then I'm going to trim that one off so this one is going to secure at the front of my e-ring or my pendant if you prefer it to be a pendant just going to give that a little trim I tend to put my hand over any wires that I'm cutting just to make sure it doesn't kind of ping away and then again I'm just going to press that down with my pliers to make sure it's nice and firm and that they're sitting close together and you can adjust that little loop but a small loop should be sufficient it should look something like this if you want to get really particular you can adjust that so they're sitting nice and evenly and now I'm going to start to decorate these two parts of the wire now you can do whatever you want with this this is basically your your decoration if you wanted you could make that really really straightforward and simple and you can find now that that's going to attach straight on and you're good to go essentially um, but I am going to add a little bit more decoration with this. So I'm going to just do that 2 2 weave that we did again. I've got my weaving wire attached still on the end from that bail. But if you have cut it off, don't panic. You can just attach as usual by wrapping three times around that bottom wire just to secure. I'm going to bend it out a little bit just so it's easy for me to get around. So two on the bottom two across both and keep coming in with your pliers just to compress that weave it just make sure that your weaving is really nice and neat take your time with it the wonderful thing about wire is believe it or not you're in charge you guide that wire where you want it to be so you can see I'm positioning it where I want it to be pushing it down with my finger I'll also tend to go like this with my wire just to straighten out any kinks and I'm just gonna it's you know it's got a memory to it where I bend it is gonna be where it where it goes if at any point and sometimes if you are using um, a, a very lovely uh, thin gauge wire you can find that sometimes when you you do it it, it can snap um, it doesn't happen with me really very often I think the only time it's happened for me has been once live on camera 
while I was in the middle of uh, Britain's Next Gem competition. And that's because, you know, I was holding it quite tight and the tension from my body was running down my hands. Don't, don't, don't worry, you can just wrap on another piece. Um, and, you know, anything you do, if you do ever miss a step, you've just got something a little bit more unique. There used to be, um, I think it was an Irish saying when people were doing um, like tapestries and things, they used to work in a deliberate mistake because they used to say that when they were making, um, they would be putting a little bit of their soul into each piece. And I think that is, that's the case, isn't it? When you love to make jewellery, you do put a little bit of yourself into it. So they would deliberately work in a little mistake. So maybe like an extra weave or miss one just so the, the soul could escape. So I'm just gonna repeat that. I'm gonna go all the way down and I'm gonna keep doing that repetition again about 10 times. So I've got that two, two weave and I'm gonna go down 10 times. I'm not too sure in terms of um, length where that will be, but what I want is I want to be able to bring it down here. So when I've done that weave and I will do a few more just to show you, I have done one where I've made it again but i think i'm gonna keep going with you so i can show you what to do when you get to that point so i've got here i'm just going to count one two three four five six seven two around the bottom two around both you will find sometimes i will have to i think mark said it the other day during his live it's, it's very difficult to uh, chat and count at the same time. So you'll often find me, if I'm doing a demonstration, I'll, I'll count and then I'll go, where was I up to? And then I'll count again. But it really doesn't matter if you do a little bit of an extra or one less. But what you do want to do is try and get them the same on the next earring that you do. So I'm just two around the bottom. You'll notice I'm just coming in with the pliers, just flattening that down. Just gonna pull some more off my bobbin. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two more around the bottom, two around the top and another two around the bottom. So I've got 10 repetitions of that weave. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those two wires that I've bound together. Again, if you need to, just come in with your nylon coated pliers. Your nylon coated pliers is just gonna ensure that you're not gonna kind of scratch or tarnish your wire that you can do with the tools. And I'm just gonna bring that forward and kind of echo and copy the shape of that frame. And then gonna be able to pinch that fairly flat. And then I'm gonna to start to do a little curl on the inner wire. So this one has become the inner wire here. I'm just gonna curl and do a little coil. So I'm just gonna continually wrap round and round and round and round this inside wire. And I'm gonna wrap around to create about one centimeter of that little curve. So again, I'm gonna to go to, here's one I've made earlier. Once I've got that curve, uh, that little coil, I'm gonna just turn it round in a loop, secure it to my frame and bend these ones down. Now, I feel like you're probably thinking you've just jumped a big step, but I'm gonna do exactly the same on this side. So I will show you through that. So if you want to, if it's easier, you can flip your um, piece round so you're working on the back. So that way your outer wire is gonna be the one that you're still working on, which will be the bottom one, if that makes sense. If it's this way and you want to kind of echo that where this outer wire, which was my bottom one, has got the two wraps on and then two around the top. So sometimes I find it a little bit easier just to flip whatever I'm using over. Um, and as I say, the good thing about these E-rings is once you've done this one, you're gonna be able to replicate that and you're gonna have exactly the same. Um, so you don't have to, you know, be 
concerned that you're not going to have matching earrings. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that weave again 10 times. So two around the bottom. Obviously, you'll be attaching a new piece of wire on. So this is why I said before, don't worry if, you know, it snaps and you need to reattach it. I'm going to wrap it on three times just to secure it. There is a little tail end there. Now, once that's secure, I can come in and cut just that tail end after I've anchored that wire on. And then with the pliers, I'm just going to tuck it in, make sure there's nothing sharp sticking up. So I'm going to go two around both. Again, if you need to splay them out a little bit, you can. Just make sure that those wires are basically running flush together because you want to kind of bind them nice and neatly together. What I will say is always just move your cutters to the side because if you're like mine, I've got these beautiful kits um, from JM of my tools and I've got you know my own tools that um, I, I get used to working with but they have the same colour handle and um, what I'm sure we've all done at some point is maybe picked up what we thought was chain nose or needle nose and it's actually been our wire cutters and that can be disappointing when that happens so I always just try to move them out of arm's length so I have to stop and, and check what I'm doing when I pick them up um, so I'm just going to do my 10 repetitions of that one two three four it's two around the top Two around the bottom is five, two around the top, and two around the bottom is six. Again, if you're using, you know, the same gauge of wire and you're using the same repetitions, then it's going to be the same length um, and your weaves will come to the same point, just like they will do when you start to repeat this for your next earring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two around the bottom, two around them both, two little wraps around the bottom, and two around the both. So I've done that 10 times. I'm going to wrap three times just to secure. And as I turn that round, I'm going to leave my tail end on. I'm going to probably leave on about, I'd say, 20 centimetres. Uh, you can use a little bit more just to make sure. You might not even need that much. But at this point, I do need to cut it off my bobbin or my reel. So now when I bend this over, it's going to just do exactly like the other side did. I'm just going to be echoing the shape of that frame. Just want to make sure I'm bending it at the right point. So these points are nice and even. And I'm just going to manipulate it into position before I kind of push it down towards my frame so it's sitting nice and flat and because I flipped it over when I wove that wire on you'll see now that outer is the outer on this side as well so then I'm gonna move out the inner wire <coughs> excuse me and then I'm just gonna start to coil so a coil is basically just repeatedly wrapping over and over and over again Again, I don't want that wire to kind of cross over it itself. I don't want to be moving back. I want to be traveling down that wire. So I'm just going to continue to wrap it round until I've got about a centimeter of coil. And having the similar size of that coiled section is going to mean that my little loops that I'm creating are also going to 
be around the same size. So again, if you want to kind of make a note on your round nose pliers or you want to use your bail step, your bail step is going to ensure you've got the same size on every loop that you do. Uh, your round nose, I tend to do most things by eye to be honest, um, but you can put a little marker pen, um, little dash on your round nose plier if you ever want to make sure that you know everything's going to be exactly the same. Obviously with your round nose pliers they are tapered so the closer to the handle you go the wider that's going to be. If you want something very small then use furthest away down to the point here. Um, so I'm just going to check I've got about a centimetre there. I'm going to keep wrapping. Again, I know I shouldn't use my nails, but you do find I do just tend to give things a little position with my nail just to get it into place. Uh, it could be a millimetre a little bit longer. It really doesn't have to be that precise. It's not, you know, a science, but I quite like to be accurate. So again, I'm going to get um, a round nose pliers. You can just eye it really to see what you've done on the other side. And I'm going to just position it into the center use the round nose pliers just to bring that round into a little loop and check they're looking fairly the same and they're kind of level with each other i'm going to bring that wire which is coiled is going to sit again on the inside so if you need to you can give it a little press down and i want this one to be on the inside of that one if that makes sense i'm then going to keep that weaving wire that's attached and i'm going to wrap that round the frame here so using that to kind of anchor my coil on you can go through the little loop that you've you've got there if you need to I'm just going to make sure it's nice and taut and then just bind that on together so you'll see just by coming up inside of that loop that we've made i can now attach that securely onto the frame and then the outside wire i'm going to wrap three times just to secure so you probably didn't need the 20 centimeters but as i say i always want to make sure i've got more than i need now what i'm going to do is i'm going to trim off that weaving wire so i'm going to position it where i need it to be i'm going to trim it off and i'd like to cut it just really underneath so when i tuck that in it's going to sit in between the frame and behind itself so again i've not got anything um sharp sticking out it's really important obviously you know we're making jewelry this has got to be something to wear so we want to make sure it's not going to tangle in our hair or scratch our skin or anything what i would do is i would try and ensure that these two lengths of wire are the same so what you could do is you can position them down um, kind of against each other and trim off if you need to but now I've created that little loop I'm just going to guide that wire across and kind of shape it with my fingers and I like to do this stage at the same time so I will attach it on both or I'll attach it on this side then I'll do this side and then I'll leave these bits of kind of decoration to the end so I'm just going to kind of bend that and give a little curve and I kind of want to curve it just really if I can in front of where that wire originally bends up I'm also at this point going to position my bead I want to make sure that bead's going to sit in between so these little curls are going to kind of prevent my jade coming right the way through but it's still going to allow it to have that movement so when i'm happy with how they look i'm going to give it a little look just to check that i'm quite content with that and that looks fairly symmetrical i'm going to bend those wires again i'm just using my fingers really 
to bend that around the back and the same with this one here this one is a little short but all that means is I'm just not going to need to cut it so I'm just going to bend it around my frame there again with my scissors there's not my scissors my cutters I'm gonna make that to a point where I feel like it's secure enough over my frame so I'm gonna take my cutters I'm just gonna lift it back up slightly away from my frame so I can guarantee where I'm cutting is just cutting those wires off but obviously I'm not you know anywhere near my frame so to speak and then again with my pliers I'm going to push down nice and firmly because that's going to secure that on and if I want to I can then manipulate that a little bit more with my fingers if you want these more spaced out I tend to just sometimes run my fingernail in between them really and you can position that how you want to and then all you have to do now is attach on your lovely beautiful jadeite and your jump ring and your ear hook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my um, jump rings, where if I can see where I've put them, I had it out just a second ago. Mm, I could make one, yeah, that's not a problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this on first. So what I wanna do is I wanna push up that gorgeous little um, pin. You've got this lovely little pin at the bottom with a little flower spacer. I'm gonna push that up because what I want to do is I want to just open up that little hook and I wanna open it wide enough so I can slide this on. Can be a little bit tricky, but it should just hook over that little loop. But what's gonna happen is the reason why I'm pushing it up with my finger is because that little, um, bead cap can move a little bit so once I've hooked it on here I'm just going to come in again with my pliers do be gentle with this and just reposition that closed by moving it away from myself these do look much better when they're kind of in obviously I'm showing you it down flat so you can see but it's going to look like this you can tweak it as you need to I did have my jump ring somewhere but as I can't find them now, I'm gonna use a little bit of my wire. I'm gonna use my bail step pliers and I'm gonna go a little bit rogue and show you how to make a jump ring while we're here. So I'm just gonna take, um, I only need quite a small one. So I'm gonna coil that round just using my wire and I'm gonna to continue to coil. So again, I'm not crossing over. I'm just going round and round using the shape, just little flicks of my wrist just to create those lovely little coils and then what I will do is I, I only need two jump rings for this so I don't need to make a particularly large coil and then gonna just see here where it starts I'm just gonna give it a little cut so again I know I'm covering it with my fingers so you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing here but I don't don't want to injure anyone and I'm just gonna give it a little trim and that's gonna create a lovely little jump ring. So when I open a jump ring, I, I always kind of think of like as if you're opening and closing a door. So you don't wanna open your jump ring outwards because that's gonna distort that rounded shape. If you were making your own jump rings, you could hammer that as well just for extra sturdiness. But I don't want to distort that jump ring. And also, the more I open and close it, the more of a weakness I'm gonna start putting on this point of my jump ring. And again, that's gonna weaken it eventually. So when I open and close a jump ring, I take lots of the surface area between my pliers. I use two pairs of pliers. You can get a jump ring opener if you want. And I'm just gonna give it a little delicate twist towards me. You don't want to open it too much, just a few millimeters. And then what that will do is that's gonna hook around the bale of my lovely little earring again a perfect pendant these are quite large you can change the shape of this if you need to if you want to make it much smaller you can make this part of the frame much smaller and that weave will sit close to the bottom but i do like having that little bit of that little bit of maneuverability and then going to take my gorgeous ear wire now 
you can either open up the ear wire or you can open up the jump ring. Um, I think because I've already got that jump ring open, I'm just gonna give that a little close back over again. And then I'm gonna close that jump ring. So if I've opened the jump ring by moving it away from me, I'm gonna close it by moving it towards me. So just take the jump ring that I've made and hooking that on and then close that over again. Now, ideally you wanna hear kind of like a little snap when that closes so you know it's fully, fully closed. And again, you can maneuver this if you want. If I need to reposition those loops, I can just put a little bit of pressure on with my finger and that's gonna kind of sit towards the top of that bead, but you can play about with that. Um, what I am gonna do is I am gonna try and find where I put well, not just the jump rings, but I had a little silver spacer bead. I know, no, no, I don't. <laughs> and all I want to do is just put a little spacer bead there. You know, as soon as I finish, I'll move this mat and I'll find it, won't I? But it's just going to be that little tiny detail that's going to finish it off. If I can take, here's what I've made earlier. <laughs> so all I've done is I've took a tiny three millimeter spacer bead and I've just wove it on here. And that's just gonna kind of, I think, add that little bit of detail. It also moves a little bit, which I think just adds that little bit of twinkle. But all you need to do now is just copy exactly the same process to make that next one. And you'll have, as I say, they don't look as good when they're lying flat because Jewelry is meant to be worn, isn't it? But all I've done there is put that little three millimeter spacer bead and that's just filled in that little section in between those bent parts of the frame. So that is basically how to make these gorgeous jade earrings. They are the most beautiful, beautiful jade. Um, I hope you've enjoyed them. I hope you've really enjoyed opening your advent calendar. I hope you've been good and you've waited like each day to see what have I got. I know I, I, I'm always guilty of having a little sneaky peek. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for being with me today and joining me today. If you do have a go, please do share what you've made. Um, even if you make something entirely different, we'd love to see. So do share them whenever you can. Um, and I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and wish you all the best for the new year. I hope it's filled with good health, happiness, and a whole lot of sparkle. So take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you.